Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns Hobbies and today we're continuing episode 2 of our Tamiya Comical Grasshopper build and if you like what we're doing don't forget to hit like on the button, it really helps out the channel. Okay, so where we left off last time we'd assembled the, disassembled the gearbox, we'd ball raced it, um, put the wheelie bar on and the rear suspension components as we can see here. So next step is we're looking at the book, so step 4 is done, step 5. Looking at step five, we're going straight into the radio gear. Okay, so what they want to do is they want you to central centralize the servo, the steering servo, before you actually go any further and install it into the chassis. Because once the once it's screwed into the chassis, I think it's very hard to adjust the servo saver and the alignment. So let's have a look here. So it's asking me to get the transmitter. Now for this, I'm using our Get It Going package, the Tamiya pack, and that includes the Flysky GT2B radio that I've got here, um, which is a really good dependable unit. Again, for instructions just on that, you can you can check our other videos out on the channel. What I like about this is 2.4 gig, it's got a really small receiver and quite a short antenna there, so it's quite easy and neat to mount. Paired with that, we've got the D, highest D300 servo, which is gonna be more than enough for our needs. It's got a transition time of 0.10, at a torque rating of a torque rating of six and a half kilos so it's got plenty of power to power this comical okay so i'm going to open up the this is the factory to me a speed controller which is really good that it's in in this kit excuse me while i get it out of the bag and like i said the reason that they they asked to do this is so in fact we can centralize the servo and make sure that the servo saver goes on straight and aligned okay i'll go ahead and plug that speed control into channel two channel channel one to turn channel two to burn okay channel one for the steering we'll get that plugged in the last connection we have to make is our battery and again, our Tamiya, our Tamiya Get It Going pack includes a Tornado RC 2400 milliamp NICAD battery. Now, if I turn the radio gear on, like so, make sure that the steering trim is in fact in neutral, which it is. I can go ahead here, turn it on, and we should be able to power it up. And you can hear by the noise and actually see the the servo motor itself working so all we're trying to do is get it make sure that it's central before we put our servo saver on so i suppose now i'll leave it all on for the minute i'm going to get my nine steps nippers out here and we'll cut some parts off the parts trees so we need a 25 spline for the servo itself to that one there we need the servo horn part of the servo saver and the torque ring or the spring mechanism which is this one here put that down i'll just go over where i've cut get off all the flashings and the excess moldings keep it nice and neat really quite stiff plastics in these in this parts tree and you can understand why got to be quite quite uh, stiff for the steering okay to ensure that we've not got too much slop so put this one in fact here line it up as per the instructions like so put on the torque ring and in fact if I go one way it's a tooth out, if I go another way it's almost a tooth out. So that's what we can use. You can see our trim, how it does actually alter the, by using the trim function. So straight is about there. Beautiful. Okay, now I need to get some screws. Excuse me while I just get some of these screws out for us. Okay, we've got a washer, 
got a I need the B2 collar. This one right here. This is going to ensure that we've got no slot in the servo saver itself. We've got our screw. Okay, we can go ahead now. Start with our nylon collar. Got a star washer. Then we can screw it up. That's, where did I put my nine step screwdriver? Okay, wind that up like so. And there we go. You can see how that's how it's gonna, it's all nice and central and that's perfect. So now what I can do is I can turn that off and unplug it for the moment from the receiver, unplug the battery and turn the radio off and I'll put that side that stuff to the side now because we probably won't need that till a later step okay steering servo saver assembled put on our steering ball ends we've got BA4s go ahead and screw that one in And use my handy little Tamiya wrench now. They're actually quite good wrenches that they include in the kit. And most of the guys that have done RC for a while, you'll probably find 10 of them still floating around their box. Get it started. Make sure it goes in nice and straight. There we go like so there we go lovely all right now let's move over to step six step six is asking me for the turnbuckle ends which we've got right here we've got some ball cups you can get these off the parts tree Go ahead, clean up the flashing, like so. It's little nine steps. Nippers are working flawlessly on this kit. And I could go ahead and thread these on. Use these nippers just to hold the thread without damaging it. And they've given a scale on the page for us to go off like so get that one on there wind it on you can see here nothing's dramatically tight everything's going on nice and straight it's really great to see Tamiya still keeping up the quality construction we're pretty close here I don't want it to go a little bit on this one keep it nice and even they give you a measurement of 35 mil inner to inner which we can use in this case I'm just placing it over there instructions where they give you a one to one scale I can go another half turn here perfect okay that's one turnbuckle done tie rod We'll go ahead and do the second one. Another thing you can see with this kit is how beefy these tie rods are. They'd have to be three mil in diameter, which is quite quite sturdy. The frog I built last week, that only had real thin one and a half mil or so piano wire kind of steering linkage so you can see that this kit's definitely been made to play with and be reliable and robust probably the big the big tires have probably added to it too the big oversized tires 
Gonna put a little bit more strain on everything. A bit of flash in there, I'll get rid of. There we go. So there is our 35 mil turnbuckles. Now we've got to find our servo mounts. So we've got two washers here, BB6. We've got two three by 10 mil screws here. Just putting that over the scale to confirm. Okay, now our servo mounting ears. Which I'm just trying to get the parts tree for those. Okay guys, bear with me while I find the parts for that. Okay guys, and here's the L parts tree. Go ahead and cut these servo ears off. And then, so there's two ways that it can go. And I have to do a little bit of measurement here, which seems, I just need to measure eight millimeter got my ruler right here don't need something quite as fancy as a as a vernier caliper but it can definitely help okay so we've got eight millimeters so I'm going to go ahead and mount it this way slightly offsets the servo okay and line it up like so it's only asking for one screw Sorry, while well, I'm just turning that around, getting it all lined up. Like so. Get this screw in. Nice and secure. I think I might go the other way on this one. Okay. Try this way. That one's looking much better. Nice and even. There we go. Put the second one in. Get it started. And I can place it in the servo. Like so. Get that in there. We are looking good. Okay, now we've got some big chassis pieces here to assemble. Get these off the parts tree. Like so. 
take off any of the flashings and I'll go ahead and piece this one together before we put any screws in it to make sure that it's all going to line up Get these off sometimes it helps to, to put these together because there can be flashings and faults in the mold but typical to me this is spot on first time fits together really nice no hand finishing required on this assembly so I need 10 screws for this one three by ten Three, there we go. All right, we have ten screws and one washer. Okay. So we can offer the servo up, I can put my turnbuckles on first actually, like so, and then we can go ahead, so that's going to sit in there like that. That is such a neat arrangement. Just confirming that everything does look as it should. Nice big mounts there for the servos, gives you plenty of options to, to get it in and line it all up. So I think I'll put this screw in first, the front one, and the rear screw is actually like a, a sliding screw, so it accommodates for a lot of different size servos and a lot of adjustments there get this one started now I won't tighten it up fully now but I'll get it nice and seated and then I'll go ahead and put this second one in with the washer and we've got that big slide adjustment cavity here get this one started might need a little gizmo tool here Again, one of our little nine steps tools really hand really helpful to act as a third hand sometimes the washer making it a little bit difficult to get it all lined up sometimes it's a bit of an exercise in patience is all that's required There we go, get that one, get it started, and we'll bring it on home. Like so. Again, no need to really reef on these screws and, and torque them down. They're quite aggressive in their self-tapping threads, so they won't go anywhere in a hurry. Okay, I can piece these two together. Get the steering linkage through. And we can see there how the whole 
servo that's why they make you line it up first it makes it really hard to get the servo saver off and adjust it without actually taking the whole chassis apart we'll put some screws in to get it to hold together One at the back here. One in the middle. Really starting to take shape now. Okay, we've got a bracket that goes on the back here, F3. Let's find my F parts tree. Got my F parts tree right here. And it looks a lot like this part, F3. Okay, cut that off. Put that back. We can locate that over and start screwing these in. Now one thing you'll notice with Tamir is that it really does go together really nice not requiring a great deal of hand finishing or or fitting in between the parts and that's because they spend a lot of time <clears throat> and they've had a lot of practice and experience in the, the engineering and getting their products just right and this one although it's a very simple and i suppose entry level model it still goes together really really nice it doesn't feel like a cheap kit at all so i'm going to cut these parts off the end parts tree got my nippers here so i need n4 and n1 and four and n1 That is one beefy suspension arm. So here we have another end parts tree. Put that to the side. Start assembling our front suspension arms. Like so. So that tabs line up there. And these tabs line up here. They really do make it very straightforward for you. Hmm. Okay, get these screws in. Two piece suspension arms held together by screws. Something to me I've been doing for years. does keep them very resilient adds a lot of flex to the suspension but does make them quite strong okay got a couple of screws here All right, I need to put a couple of ball ends in 
into the inner hole and this will be I reckon the lower shock mounts it's my little four-way tool gun here five and a half mil there we go this one and they're using the old u-shaped hinge pins I can see and the next step there we go so we've got our front portion of the chassis we put our suspension arm on one on each side we've got our u-shaped hinge pin Again, it's not the first time to me I have utilized that and for very good reason too it's quite quite robust then we've got our upper upper front suspension arms in six we've got some hinge pins these ones here And this sits in here a little bit hard to see on camera I'll show you once I've I've got it up careful not to stab myself with the screwdriver wouldn't be the first time I'll screw this one on too being careful not to over tighten them this is not somewhere where you want to start stripping the so there's the upper suspension arm here there's the upper and lower that'll work together the hinge pins gone in we can start now on step 10 where we go straight to the steering blocks and here we are on our B parts tree very sturdy plastic this one and say it's got lots of nylon in it making it very robust Our steering blocks here it almost snaps off the the, the part sprue Again, going over to double check any flashing. Now, this gives me a point as well to install more of the ball bearings. Now, you'll notice when I did the transmission, we completely re raced it. The rear hubs we put bearings in, and the front steering blocks are going to be no different where the axle comes through. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the bearings in. And the out drive get it all seated nice and then we'll retain it with a body clip that's a handy build tip if it even if it's not a Tamiya you can often use that when you're assembling your cars and your out drives sticking a body clip through it so you don't lose the drive pins and the hexes off of the axle Okay, we've got our front wheel bearings in. It's going to be super smooth. We've got our caster blocks and our hinge pins. So, we've got our front one here. It's going to go like so. Just screws in. It's got a big meaty shoulder on this. Again, to add to the smoothness and the strength of the whole front assembly. And 
and this is what we call a C hub design because it's in fact shaped like a C. You can see there, that's where it gets the name C hub suspension. It doesn't have to be tight. Now the book has called for assembly lube but I'm sort of shying away from it because it is going to be used in a dirty environment and I actually don't want all a load of dirt and debris to get stuck into these moving parts. So by not putting grease there um, you're not going to get all grease sticking to it which basically grinds away. The dirt will stick to the grease and that will effectively grind away all your plastic parts and make it very sloppy very quickly. Okay. Get this done. Beautiful. That's going to be our steering hub. Like so. Got a couple of ball ends to put in there. Wind that in. And with most Tamiya kits, there's no need to pre-drill or, or hand tap any of the threads. It's all been engineered in a way that it just fits together with a bit of hand pressure. Here we go, get the steering knuckle done. Let's make sure the thread's not bottoming out. There we go. Now we have our right and left steering arms. Okay, on to page 11. Okay, so now we've got to hook it up to the front hinge pins. Put our, uh, put our outer hinge pins on. Got a couple of screws here. And the top hinge pins. Okay, and we can put that on to our chassis. Gonna sit like so. I'll put the bottom one on first. That'll help hold it all together. Get that in. Going together so nice, this kit. The tolerances are minimal and the clearances are fantastic. They're, it's really going together nice and smooth without binding. It's all moving so freely. It's not asking. I can put this cover in here, the M8. This one here, and that's going to retain the U-shaped hinge pin. And act like a little bumper bar too. That is a super neat design. Get that in, get that screwed down. Like so. That will ensure our hinge pin can't fall out. And get the front end all together. Now I can go ahead and put the top hinge pin in. Get it all lined up. Again, as simple as 
screwing it in. Making sure that it's not binding. It's fitting perfect. Has lovely movement. Now, it is going to feel better after it's had a battery or two. Go ahead and snap this steering arm on. And I keep looking for the front drive shafts, which of course, being a tool drive model, it doesn't have them but I'm sure it shares a lot of the same parts with the four wheel drive models such as the Comical Avanti and the Comical Hotshot. Here we go. That's super nice. Gonna back this one off a little bit. Just having a look what's going on here. Here we go. Can snap this one on. And there we have our front suspension. You can see here how nice and smooth it's moving. Fully independent of each other. And now the two chassis are hopefully just about ready to marry together. Let's have a look at step 12. So step, step 12 we'll start going into the dampers and assembling that part. Then the next part after the dampers is marrying up the chassis. So I will stick to the steps and the instructions. And next episode episode number three of the comical build will in fact work towards doing the dampers and getting them all done because they're quite quite time consuming in themselves so today episode two we've been working on getting the the radio all trimmed up and the steering servo straight building the servo saver assembling the front suspension and of course the front part of the chassis getting all ready to be married up and at which point it's going to sit going to sit a lot like I just have to loosen this screw off when it comes together it's going to sit a lot like this so you can see here it's really starting to take shape and it's got quite a small wheelbase which is really going to add to the character and the comical nature of its of its of its namesake I suppose being a comical grasshopper so I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode episode two of the Tamiya comical grasshopper build and I'm Brett from Hearns thanks for watching <laughs>